baby. Frank Harris TV, baby. We back with that real truth, unadulterated, uninhibited, raw, real truth. I got my boy A Boogie. I yell in the building with me. What's going you on? You know what I'm saying? We about to get into it. Great topics. Great conversation. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. Frank, thank you for having me for one. My brother A, we here, baby. Love seeing episode one and two with your dad. He's a, he's a tough act, act to follow, but, you know, let's go. No, let's it, but it's a different vibe. Pops right. brought a vibe. We're bringing right. a different vibe here. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That's different right. vibes. But, um, so, hey, we're going to start with a, with, with a versus, right? We're going to name right. a topic with um, two different entities versus each other, and then we're going to figure out which one of those two we choose. Odell Beckham or Antonio Brown? Ooh, Odell Sorry. Beckham or Antonio Brown. Yeah, I'm going to let you go first. Okay. What, what, what you got? Man, I mean, amazing receivers, both of them. Temperament-wise, now, you know, AB's having the problems in Pittsburgh. I got to go AB. He's Shit. He's a better athlete. Both, you know what? It's 1A, 1B. I got to say, those two are really close, but I got to go with Antonio Brown. But hold on. So, Brown is having problems in Pittsburgh. Beckham's having problems in New York, too. No, no they doubt, both no tripping. Doubt. Listen, that's receiver syndrome. All receivers right. historically are divas. Right, right, right. Look through the history of the NFL. We can go on and on. Randy Moss. You know, it's funny. Maybe the greatest ever wasn't a diva was Jerry Rice. But, right. you know, Keyshawn Johnson, we can go on and on with right. this. Larry Fitzgerald's real, you know, even killed. Yeah, you know, Larry Fitzgerald's uh, even Hall killed. Of Famer, too. Who, definitely know? Hall of Famer. For sure. But look, of those two, you got to go with A.B. Uh, it's not even yeah, close. For sure, for sure. You know, I know you're a New York guy. I know you're a giant guy. But Odell Beckham ain't do it. I mean, he's a, right. oh, I mean, he's more for, he's a handsome guy. He gets his endorsements. The girls like him. His only playoff game he played in, when he played against the Packers, he was dropping footballs all over the place. Right, going to Miami, pardon, partying, you know, not taking it seriously. Uh -oh, Definitely so. all A.B. And, well, you know what? A.B.'s got a better quarterback throwing him the ball, though. You know what I mean? We, we factored that in. I agree with that. A.B. got a better player, but A.B. is the greatest receiver of this generation. You got to go, a. but by the way, let me just go back for a second, A, because you just brought something up that kind of bothered me a little bit. Uh-oh. Now, you didn't bother me, but I'm saying it bothered me before right. when it came out, when they were talking about how he went down to Florida for a trip. Now, let me ask a question, though. Is that not overrated? <laughs> the guy had a few off days. I guarantee you, right, as he went there, what if Eli Manning and his family went to somewhere or other players went somewhere for a day or two off? The guy's got a few days off. Why can't he go to Miami? Why he got to stay at the crib? Listen, man, you want to take, you take the sport seriously. You're playing a game. You're playing an important playoff game. Kobe Bryant shooting 1,000 shots in the gym. I'm always going to bring up Kobe oh, Bryant. Oh, boy. Shooting 1,000 shots in the gym before a game, you before a playoff game. He takes his craft seriously. You can't do that. Yo, you, I, yo, you're, you're playing professional sports. You're making millions of dollars to do so. You just can't take a couple days off. You got to stay conditioned. You got to stay focused. Can't do it, man. Now, see, here we go. We could at least wait it to basketball before we got a Kobe <laughs> Bryant reference from you. Nah, man. I love yeah. Kobe Bryant so much. We're talking about football and wide receivers, and he got a Kobe Bryant reference oh, in there. Man. True, true. <laughs> Y'all got to go with AB, though. Yeah. I got to go with AB on that we, one. We agree on that. AB, for sure. Zeke Elliott? Or Todd Gurley. Ooh. This is, hey, wow. and let I me tell where you're going. Let me tell you, that's a good one, eh? Because you know I'm a Cowboy fan and you're yeah. a Ram fan. Yeah. So where are we going, Todd Gurley or Ezekiel Elliott? Look, we're going Todd Gurley, of course, man. First oh, of all, come on. you know what? Man. Listen, now look at how well my guy's set up for the Super Bowl, you know, coming up in, in, in a week and a half. Uh, these playoffs, having C.J. Anderson to take some of the load off of him. Take some of the load. Shit, he been running better, <laughs> arguably. True. I mean, my, my guy's a little little hurt, right? He played the, the sideline. Uh, you know, he's on the sideline for much of a uh, last game. Go with Todd Gurley, though. Better athlete to me. I mean, Zeke, the, you know what? Both great players. I'm not saying Zeke's a, a, a bum, but Todd Gurley's just a so, hair So better. let me say this. Gurley is a fantastic player, right? That's a one and two again. I, I favor Zeke. And look, I'm a cowboy guy, and I like Zeke a bit better. But look. Like Ezekiel is also more important to his team than Gurley. Look, the Rams have clearly showed they can win without Gurley. Gurley's been right. banged up, and they still won, you know, in a pretty um, good fashion with the quarterback and the coach, more importantly, right? You guys sure. have an amazing coach. Young McVay, you know what I mean? You young, guys got young a horrible guru. coach. We got the worst coach in, <laughs> in football. For and we've sure. shown, you know, that we can't really get it done without Ezekiel. So I think right. Ezekiel's a bit more important to his team. I that agree with said, that. Yeah. That being said, I got to rock with Ezekiel. You rocking with your boy Gurley. There's no right answer there because they're both two. Those are the best two running backs in the NFL. For sure. We'll Saquon is now. new. Yeah. He's going to be decent. He, he's almost there. For yeah, sure. yeah. 
Eagles quarterback. Wentz versus Foles. Ooh, Eagles quarterback. That's easy. Wentz that's, versus that's Foles. That's not even a hard one. Foles, of course. What? Get rid of Wentz. Yo, listen, man. Foles is a guy that can get the job done. He's won a Super Bowl. He took him deep in the playoffs, you know. Yeah. He, he's the man. The guy can play under pressure. Wentz, still unproven okay. in, in the big so games. So let me say this. So I go with Foles too, right? Because there's some pixie dust that's, that's on Foles when it comes time to lead that team. And he just fits in really great with that team, the chemistry, how he plays. But let me tell you why. If somebody argue Wentz, I would get it, right? When you're talking about a franchise quarterback, you're going to give one of those two guys a five-year, 100 to $120 million deal, right? Foles is probably one or two, maybe two more years left of greatness. Wentz is a young stud. I mean, realistically, Wentz was probably before he got hurt last season, not this season, but the season before, was the, the, the MVP. He was the MVP before he got hurt. Now, Foles carried the torch and carried them to a championship. And I like Foles more, but in terms of long-term projections and franchise quarterback, how are you going to go with Foles over Wentz? Wentz is younger, right, and got more upside. Well, look, if, if the question is who's better for the Eagles right now, right? right. I'd say it's Foles. I'd, I'd say you take Foles in the next season. You know, they, they've been really, you know, uh, 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 depleted mm -hmm. on their roster with, with a ton of injuries. Foles can clearly carry that team. He can, he can take them to the, the playoffs, he take does. them to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl. You, get, you, you can get a decent trade for Carson Wentz, right? Oh, you get a great trade. He's a franchise yeah. quarterback. Of I mean, you, you, get, you get a fan. But the question, though, is this, though. This is the thing, though, eh? When you're talking about who's right for Philly in the short term, but the issue is this: Foles wants to lead a team now, so he's going to want a long-term deal, and and Wentz is your, is 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 a long-term deal kind of guy too. Right. So which one of those two guys are you giving the five-year, hundred and twenty million dollar deal? That's the question, really. I'm giving it to the guy that won the Super Bowl, man. Clearly. Okay. He's the man. I think I got to rock with Foles too, but I but but I, I just like Foles. It's something sometimes. Sometimes I think Wentz is the better player. But I think Foles is the better player for that team. Sometimes it's just sometimes there's a there's a match and a connection between a team and a player, and it's something to be said about how they react to Foles. It's something special about the Foles Eagle relationship as opposed to Wentz. And look, as an aside, you see there's some rumblings coming out of the locker room where they're saying some of the players have problems with Wentz yeah. and him being ego, an egomaniac, egotistical, etc. So who knows if there's some truth to that. But one thing I will say, I know the Eagles are going to choose Wentz, but before you make that long-term commitment, you better make sure that noise coming out the locker room is not true because you don't want to commit five years, $120 million to a guy that the rest of the team, his teammates don't like at that right. position. It sounds like it is true, and it sounds like the players have spoken, right? They're, they're, they're in the media. They're trying to let the world know that they want foals. True. At the helm. So we'll Eagles, see. you got a problem, baby. Big yeah. time. It's, it's a good problem, though, right? You know, if I'm if I'm in the front office there, you know, I get rid of Wentz. I get I get you know whatever I can get for him a lot, you, which will be a lot. You get you get a major haul for Wentz. I mean, sure. franchise quarterbacks are the most important asset in, in professional football. Absolutely. Who's a better shooter, Clay Thompson or Steph Curry? Ooh, ooh, oh my ooh. God. Who's a better shooter, Clay wow. Thompson or Steph Curry? That's Wow. Well, first of all, two of the greatest shooters of all time. Well, not two. In the, in, no, the, in, the, in the top five, no, top ten. Not easy. two of. The two best. The two Let's best. be clear. Well, There's I mean, not... Who's Ray, a better Ray shooter? Ray Allen was, was, was nah, a pretty good shooter. Nah, you bugging A. You know? Come on now. Don't do yeah. that. Ray yeah. Allen was a good shooter, but Clay and, uh, uh, and, and, and Curry? What? That's one and two. Okay. So who you got? Steph. Nah. Look. But, Clay, Clay Thompson, he just torched my Lakers the other night, right? That was everybody embarrassing. Torch, everybody torching your Lakers, but okay. Not everybody. You know, we have, we have some, you know, anyway, we'll get to that topic. But, you know, Clay, I saw the stat, right? 44 points off of zero, or, or all assists, all, all assisted assists. points, right? right? Like, he's a catch-and-shoot guy, spot-up guy. Man, Steph Curry can create from anywhere on the court. Really. A at least Wait, the from half-court The court question on. is not who's the better creator. We just said who's the best shoot, shooter. So, shooter, I think that answers the question on... Steph Curry, as a, as a creator of shots, is a better shooter, without so, a doubt. So let me say this. Steph Curry absolutely is a better shot creator, unequivocally. But from a pure shooter perspective, I got to go with Clay. From a pure shooter, form, mechanics, form, mechanics, splash. Look, two great shooters, okay? If I'm at the end of any basketball game, okay, and I'm giving either one of those guys. The, now, now Curry, I, Curry's a better player. But right. if I have 
one shot, open shot, right. one open or contested shot with one of those two guys, I'm going Clay Thompson. I don't think you're going to get an open shot with Clay Thompson, though. What kind of play can you drop where, like, he's not going to be double teamed or, or well covered, no, right? No, so, I, I, so, I'm, so, I'm being hypothetical, though. Okay. I'm just speaking hypothetical. But hypothetically, you put the ball in Curry's hands to, to create a shot to, to take that last but, one. But that's creation, and, and that may be But I'm talking about. Like, Clay, to me, I mean, Clay's, this is how pure his shot is. Right, there was another game. He had 44 last game. There was one game. Then he had like 50, and they yeah. said he had seven dribbles. I mean, he's insane. Right, seven exactly. dribbles. So that right, shows you that right. he, so just shooting wise, cash money like mine. FYI, <laughs> cash money. <laughs> hey, Trav, Next time we should shoot outside on the basketball court so people can see is cash <laughs> money. Clay Thomas esque. Oh, <laughs> But again, another 1A, 1B, but yeah, those I, are the get, best I give, me personally, I give the edge to Steph. Curry. I got to go with Clay when it comes to pure shooting. Steph's yeah. a better player. Steph's a better shot creator. But pure shooter, I got to go to Clay. Okay, cool. Who you starting your franchise with? James Harden or Kevin Durant? Ooh, Harden Man. versus Durant. Wow. Who are you starting your franchise with? By the way, two guys that got drafted by the same team, Sam Presti, drafted both of those guys with the Oklahoma City Thunder, right? He had yeah. Harden. Think about think about how good that guy did draft wise. He had Harden, right? He had uh, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. Wow. But anyway, who you got out of those two? I got Durant. I just think all around better player. It's just he's one of the most skilled basketball players of all time. Harden, of course, is amazing. You know, he's out there. He's he's killing it, scoring. And and by the way, the stat for him is is all unassisted points, right? Like he's you know, at, at, at the top of the heap in terms of uh, uh, being a, a creator on the offensive side, but not an excellent defender, doesn't give his effort there. Shit, but, Katie don't either, really. Well, you know, hey, the game's on the line. I'd rather have Durant guarding, you know, the best player on the other Look, team. I think this is a bad one because I think you're getting caught. This is a great question, but I think this is we getting caught up in the wrong thing. James Harden is, to me, clearly a better player than Kevin Durant. Mm. And let me tell you this, okay, you talk about versatility as a player, Kevin Durant is a scoring machine. Kevin Durant scores like we breathe. Kevin Durant is a prolific scorer and will probably go down when, it, when he retires as the best scorer of all time. For sure. Right? That's undeniable. But James Harden, first of all, is not only a great scorer, which he's, which he's clearly showing, by the way, his new his streak right now of like That's twenty plus For thirty sure. point games is unbelievable. And, and, right. and, and you know what's crazy about that streak? I think Will it's so funny they were showing like Will Chamberlain had like five hundred and fifty fifty like you know thirty point games in a row. And then after that, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's I was surprised that Michael Jordan, when he averaged I think it was thirty seven points a game one year, didn't get to that mark where he had right. I think twenty um, straight games or thirty points per game. Anyway, that being said. On, James Harden is also giving you nine, ten assists a game. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean that's like leading the NBA numbers in terms of assists. Neither one of the guys are great on defense, but James Harden is a way better assist man. I mean, what are you getting from Kevin Durant outside of scor scoring? Well, I mean, he's an un unselfish player, right? And let me is say it? this: I think he is for sure. He fits in well with with the with that squad. Ask Draymond yeah. Green how well he fits in with the squad. Well, Draymond Green is the one that doesn't fit in that squad, so. I wouldn't want, but anyway, the question being, who would I want to build a franchise around? Well, look, let, let's say this, right? Harden is playing without Chris Paul. These numbers are astronomical and, and impressive. Yes, he and is. He's the MVP without Chris Again. Paul on the court. And by the way, Chris Paul comes back on the court. You know, how are, how are Harden's numbers? As, well, he, as was, he, he was MVP last year with Chris Paul. Don't act like my man can't get MVPs. Don't say he can't get MVPs if Chris Paul's on the court with him. Right. He's about to be a two-time MVP. Your boy right. Durant got one. Right. Well, Durant's still, you know, close to the, the top of the heap in scoring, playing with the Splash Brothers. I, yeah, I watch those games like he fits in well. He passes the ball. I go with Durant. Well, well, well OK, I got to go with my man Harden because I feel like he does more for a team than Durant. Durant just scores. All right. Cool. Muhammad Ali versus Floyd Mayweather. Ooh, oh, Muhammad man. Ali versus Floyd oh Mayweather. God. TBE, the best yeah. ever, baby. Who you got? You got Muhammad Ali, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, or you got Money Mayweather? Hey, who you got, man. baby? Well, that's such a loaded question, man. I think Muhammad Ali is such an important figure in the 20th century. You know, so beyond beyond boxing, if we're talking just strictly boxing, I go with Mayweather. I mean, he's most certainly the best ever, the best boxer ever, without a doubt. But Muhammad Ali. With no knockouts? 
Well, I'm just, he's a, a technical boxer. He's a defensive you know? boxer, but okay. Right. Technical. Muhammad Ali was technical too. For sure. Flow yeah, like a butterfly, sting like a rope of dope. Come on, baby. Come on, eh? He, he was way more important to, to the world in general as, as a human and you know, you know, what he represented. So I go Muhammad Ali. Easy, easy. Okay, so let me say this. Muhammad Ali was absolutely more important to the world from a moral perspective, right? Because of what he did in terms of standing up for his religion against the war for and sure. speaking out on a lot of um, topics that related to some of the issues that we had in society. So Muhammad Ali's impact. But in terms of <laughs> importance to the world, I mean, Money May Mayweather is probably as impacting his culture in a negative way, right? On social media and money and making it rain right. in a crazy way. So I think is almost like a sign of the times. You know, Ali came up in an era where, you know, social consciousness was a lot more important to athletes than today. Right. You know, you had guys like um, Jim Brown. You had guys like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Sure. You had guys like Bill Russell. And those black athletes really stood up um, for the cause, quote, unquote, and, you know, what it meant to be black and to stand up. And they were going through, you know, you know difficult times. And I think this generation is the me generation, me, 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 me. And I think Floyd kind of fits in for sure with that uh, dynamic. I got to go with Ali because as great as Floyd is as a boxer and as a fighter, I think Floyd is amazing. I think social impact that Ali made was a, a trillion times bigger. Right. And also, th I think Ali was a, is, was a more exciting fighter. For sure. Right? And also thought Floyd, I won't say he duck fights, but he fought people. Like, Ali took all the fights. He fought George Foreman when George Foreman sure. was great. Mm -hmm. he, you know, his Frazier fights are epic fights. Epic, yeah. And I sure. feel like Floyd, like, he fought Pacquiao too late. Pacquiao and Floyd were too old. Floyd ducked some fights. I, I felt like Floyd, you know, he caught, like, like he caught, um, oh, gee whiz, I can't think of the boxer's name now, the kid who just did the deal with um, Canelo Alvarez. Mm. He fought, like, imagine if he fought Calvare Alvarez when Alvarez was in his prime. Mm -hmm. He fought guys, I don't know that he fought the, the caliber of fighter right. that Ali fought, and I think so many times um, the politics of boxing got in the way of the fights. And then by the time the fights came, guys were too old and it wasn't as good as it would have been when both fighters were in their prime. So Floyd, amazing boxer. One thing you got to give Floyd, credit for it, though, is he changed the paradigm of boxing economically. Mm, no doubt, no doubt. Right? Right. But I, there'd be no Floyd without Ali. Ali well, created that flamboyancy, not just in boxing, but in sports and culture in general. Yeah, he, now, so, th that flamboyant, Ali, from a boxing perspective, is absolutely the father of that, right? Talking, fighting, I've shook up the world. I'm pretty. I'm a bad man. But, I, but Ali was something special. But Floyd, right. but, but I got to go with Ali too. Floyd, Floyd's great, changed yep. the dynamic, made a lot of money. Yep. But Ali, the man. But best boxer ever, though, I give that to Floyd for sure, pound for pound. I go with Ali. I okay. can't go with Floyd over Ali because, okay. like I said, Floyd didn't fight the caliber of people. Right. I mean, Ali Norton, Ali Frazier, Ali right. fought everybody. Ali Frazier three times. The Rumble, all, all the Rumbles. Right. Um, come on, man. Ali, um, George Foreman, the Rumble in the Jungle. Come on, these are. Epic fights. Absolutely. Jimmy, what's the epic fight that you can tell me Floyd got? Pacquiao. Pacquiao was, there was all in. For sure. No, that wasn't a, no. like, like, what's the, I mean, Ali had epic, epic sh Right? Ali Frazier. What? Thrill in Manila. What? Right. Come on, man. Anyway. Don't do that. NWA or Wu-Tang? Ooh, wow. NWA Wow. Oh, Wu Tang. Wow, oh, 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 that's a good one, eh? It's a really, really good one. I'd say that's like, you know, we're talking music now. That's another 1A, 1B. Easy. Both very, very influential in culture at, at their times. NWA, probably more so. Um, Who you riding bring, with? Bringing the gangster rap, uh, rap element into music and introducing the world to gangster rap. NWA, of course, I'm a West Coast guy. NWA. Oh, we got the West Coast bias yeah. right now. The West Coast bias, man. NWA, uh, Ice Cube, Easy E, for sure. Dr. Dre. So let me say this, man. <laughs> I think, look, I'm an East Coast guy all the way. New York, all the way. Harlem. Shout out New York. Is Staten Island New York though? No, I'm just kidding. Of course it, it is. is. Of course it is. Yeah. Semi, right? Even though it is, right? right? right. It is. Those ones right. in the five boroughs. But look, let me say this. Wu Tang, New York, all the way. Love Wu Tang. And not only was Wu-Tang amazing, but Wu-Tang also spawned a lot of other 
mm-hmm. great artists. If you look at Wu Tang compared to NWA, not NWA spawned greatness too, but you had Method Man, right? Um, Raekwon was crazy. ODB mm-hmm. was you know was amazing too. Um, so Ghostface, I mean you know, but you know NWA, you know to me maybe the most influential one of the. I mean, NWA, what? Gangsta rap. Absolutely. And, and not just gangsta rap, but look at Ice Cube what he's been able to do, you know, as a solo artist and then in culture. And then look at Dre. Look like, at Dre. the Dre tree sure. is crazy. crazy. Yep. So, so NWA, what? They painted pictures. Both, both, both teams painted pictures. You knew what it was like living in the New York, in the belly of the For beast sure. in New York. And you knew what, what gang culture was like in L.A. What? I mean, the police was a classic, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, classic song. Right. Express yourself. What? Two classic debut albums. I got yeah. a NWA, man. And, and, sure. and, then the, and then the Dre Tree alone? Yeah. The Dre Tree alone? I mean, look, Eminem, 50 Cent, Kendrick Lamar. The Dre Tree is crazy. It goes on and on. Yeah, I mean, NW, I got a NW on that one. Well, it hurt my heart because we yeah. was New York. Nah, look, I love Wu Tang too. It was a huge Ooh. fan, but again, that's why I say it's one A, one B. It's not. It's but NWA. All See, we choosing sure. some good ones. See, we choosing yeah. one A's and one B's. We ain't choosing yeah. one in twelve. Right. Come on, baby. Nelly or LL Cool J? Nelly or LL Cool J? That's less one A, one B to me, man. You got to give that to LL Cool J, man. Yeah, he, on, on what premise? And, 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 let me tell. Let me tell this. But the question is, Nelly L. Cool J. In terms of like, you know, good looking, the ladies love the ladies right. man rappers. He uh, he invented it. You know, he cool. invented, there'd be no Nelly without L. Cool J. Yeah, but, but, but and who, but, who, who did it, it better? L. Cool J. How? For sure, without a doubt, man. Hype pimp juice. All, look, look, his impact on culture. He's still relevant today, man. And I wouldn't say that, unfortunately, for Nelly. Great artist. El is not relevant as an artist. Not, not, not musically, but he's still relevant in, in his acting and just as a personality out there. So is the RZA, but I mean, what does that mean? Yeah. I mean you're, if you're with Jay-Z, the only people moving units, M, Pimp Juice, and us, Eminem, Pimp Juice, Nelly, and The Rock. There's a timestamp on that record. Woo! <laughs> M, Pimp Juice. Listen, El J was the man. We love El J. He was an originator. Music was great, For but sure. new, but Nelly's numbers and what he's been able to accomplish, like his his numbers, way exceed L. Cool J's number one records, the amount of albums sold. What? But his career was shorter. You know whose was Nelly's, and L. Cool J through through the '80s had the resurgence with Mama Said Knock You Out. Yeah, let, let me say this: the power. Let me, I'm I'm going with Nelly on this all the way. And, and, and El Cool J was my guy with him. Man. But let me tell you the problem with Not El. going with the New York guy right here, you know, with El Cool Because Queens. Nelly was the, I understand, but Nelly, you know, what Nelly was doing, the problem with your boy El Cool J, though, is that he came out making records like I'm Bad, Hard Records, My Radio, and then every song was a girl song. Who do you love? Every Gotta song was a chick song. Gotta sell records. He man. had no versatility. Pimp Juice was making different kind of records. Agree to disagree. Come on, L. L. J. Legendary, more yeah. relevant now because of the movies, NCIS, LA TV show. But the Pimp Juice was the man, boy. I got, I got, I got to fuck with Pimp Juice on that one. Outcast or Run DMC? Oof. Ooh, wow. another That's good one. So hard. Outcast or Run DMC? <laughs> Pioneers. Let's go, A Boogie. Where, where I, you at? Talk I to me. I just have to say Outcast because they're the, the greatest hip hop duo or greatest hip hop group rather of all time. Uh, Run DMC, incredibly influential, if not the most influential hip hop group artist, period, of all time. Give him that. So how you get, so how you give an outcast over from, from an artistry perspective, I think that, you know, as a fan, I like every single Outcast album. I know nah. the words to almost, you know, every song. Listen you, to them, burn them into the ground. You bugging. Run DMC. And run DMC. Too. Run DMC. Run DMC. L- l- let me say, Outcast, amazing, amazing numbers, right? I don't. I, I know their albums. We all know their albums. They had big records. Run DMC, mainstream hip hop. If if if, if you sure. if you were to look at one group, like Run DMC is like Magic and Bird was to the NBA, For or what sure. Jordan was to the but, but Magic and Bird, right? 
when the NBA became mainstream, it was Magic and Bird. Run DMC, when, they, when, when rap became mainstream, they were the people that mainstream rap. What, yes. what, 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 what um, Russell Simmons did with them mm -hmm. was unbelievable. They had all of it. They, they made, and then when they did, the, and then when they did the Arrow Smith record, crossing Watch genres, you. walk this way, that was un, man. Look, Outkast, fantastic, amazing group. Shout out L.A. Reid. You know what I'm saying? Was was very important in what they were able to do. But Run DMC, bro, I gotta go. Yeah, Run DMC. I mean, I, I, I say Run DMC mm -hmm. is one of the most influential music groups across any genre sure. of all time. But Outkast is too, that, though. Outkast is yeah, too. Outkast just musically for me just were better. Better. Okay. Better musicians, just better better artists, better albums, better songs. Now I got to fuck around DMC, but okay. Who's responsible for the winning? Is it Brady or is it Belichick? Ooh, versus who's responsible for the man, winning? I love Is it Brady man. or Belichick? Good questions, right? Yeah, really good. Great question. Is it Brady or Belichick? Brady versus Belichick. Who's responsible for the winning? Yeah, I think they're both going to go down as the greatest in their respected crafts, right? I mean, Brady's right now the living greatest football player of all time, greatest quarterback. Well, of living all time. and not living, right? I mean, he's the right. best football player ever. And, and there's no dispute. You can't dispute and it. And Belichick's the best coach. And ever. Belichick's the best coach. But who's too. more responsible for the rings, baby? At the end for of the, the day, dynasty. At the end of the day, it's what happens on the field. You give it to Brady, of course. You know, I mean, Belichick's calling the plays, but you know, the, the players and what, how they, how they respond under adversity under pressure in the big games. Tom Brady, Brady is just an incredible athlete, incredible competitor, one of the best competitors of all time. No doubt about that. So let me say this, okay? This is a hard one for me, okay? I, I, I like what you said about the players on the field dictate what happens in the game. You're right. But let me tell you why I got to go at Belichick. If you look at the history of this team, okay, players come in and out, players are shuttled in and out. They, they get rid of superstars. They cut them, bring in new players, but the culture, Belichick set the Patriots culture. And that's what they're winning and everything they've done is all about. It's kind of like what's happening with the Spurs and the NBA with Popovich and their dynasty right. and how they won. And so culture is set. And when you set a culture, right, it really, really, really dictates how everything goes. So, and, and one thing Brady does a good job of is implementing culture as the leader, as the head, as the quarterback. Brady is amazing in terms of hard work ethic, what he does on the field, how he carries himself off the field, all the things that epitomize the dynasty and what the Patriots stand for, mm -hmm. Brady embodies that. But it starts from the top. And I sure. think Belichick creates a culture that everybody falls in line to. And again, the fact that they're able to shuttle players in and out, in and out all the time, the right. fact that they systematically take you know, players that nobody else wanted. They take guys that played football, lacrosse in college. I mean, they take guys that no one thought. You, I was watching, there was a player that, that um, was a rugby player, right? right? And he played at Ohio State. He played three downs of offense, at, of um, defense at Ohio State, was a safety, was a rugby player. Um, and then the Patriots saw him at their pro day. He was a great athlete. The Patriots mm -hmm. eventually signed him, and he became a Pro Bowl special teams player. The guy played three snaps outside of special teams in college. Three snaps at Ohio State and became an all-star playing special teams in the NFL. Right. I just think Brady, Belichick, it, it starts with the culture that he implements. Brady's amazing, he's the TBE of football, but the culture and the fact that you can show players in and out and they still are so good. Right, Right. yeah, but if Brady, if Brady's not quarterback, right? It's happened, it's happened once with, with Matt Castle, SC guy. Never, never started for SC. Uh -huh. Came in as a backup. You know, and did great, was, by the way. Was impressive. But, we did great. But did they win a Super Bowl that year? They didn't win a Super Bowl. But, yeah. but by the way, the fact that he played there, Matt Castle got a big, 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 big contract. Right. The Chiefs paid him all that money. For sure. And they showed how much of a bum he was. And the same <laughs> thing, right? Right. True. I asked all the USC bum quarterbacks. <laughs> by the way, oh. I know you're a USC guy, oh, but man. your quarterbacks are the most overrated um, assets in the, in the uh, history of college football. I mean, Carson football. Palmer, man, he did his thing. Carson, yeah. Okay, so as you name him, yeah. okay, do I need to run down the list of bums <laughs> that you had? Yeah. Castle, you just said. Right. Um, well, he never started, Should though. we talk about the butt fumble? Butt fumble, Matt, you know, Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez, Matt should, should, Leinart, should we talk about know? the bum? Leinart. Yeah, Barkley. Bark, I mean, Kessler. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, they don't, they're not having deep runs. In the, in deep the runs, no <laughs> runs.
But anyway, that's a little off topic. Yeah, but I gotta go with my man Belichick. You fucking with Brady, I get it. But 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 it starts from the top. It's sure. the culture that he implements every day and how he holds people accountable. That's what I think is at the at the um the head of their dynasty.